Hello and welcome back to the Three Pillars Podcast. I'm your host, Chase Tobin, a.k.a. Tobin the Motivator. The Three Pillars Podcast is that podcast that focuses on those three pillars of fitness, spiritual, mental, and physical fitness to help us grow closer to the Lord on this journey that we call life. Guys, thank you so much for being here. I'm going to apologize ahead of time. I was at a trade show in Boston all weekend and all week, and my voice is a little bit gone, so I apologize for that. We're going to power through it, and I think we're going to be just fine. Uh, but that's why I'm a little scratchy today. It is what it is. Uh, we're going to be discussing the hero today, the hero archetype. Again, one of the 12 archetypes we've discussed uh, going with Carl Jung. So we're going to get into that today. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. I'm going to do housekeeping on the end. Uh, so until we get there, thank you so much for being here. If you've enjoyed the episode episode so far, thank you for being a part of this journey. If you haven't watched it yet, go watch the introduction a couple weeks back and then catch up to where we are now. So. We're going to dive right in with a quick word of prayer, and then we're going to hit the hero archetype. So here we go. Father God, thank you for being the hero in our lives. Thank you for embodying what it means to be bold and courageous, but to also be humble and compassionate. Thank you for always being in our corner and for being somebody we can look up to and for giving us the tools and the resources in life to be that role model for somebody else by letting you work through us that they can see Christ through us by our actions here on earth. God, I ask that you be with me today. Give me the words to say. Give anybody tuning into this the eyes to see, ears to hear, and hearts to receive anything that grows them close to you, Lord. In the holy name of Jesus, amen. Okay, per the usual, we're going to go through the hero archetype, okay? The other archetypes we've gotten so far, man, what we, did, we did the rebel last week. We've done the jester. We've done the caregiver, and we've done... Oh, what was the first one that we did? Maybe the caregiver was caregiver first. I have to go back and look at the schedule. We're going to get to all of this, put it that way. But today we're going to talk about the hero, okay? So what is it? Well, again, if you haven't watched this so far, this is where you're first tuning in. It is one of the 12 primary Jungian archetypes. It represents a powerful symbol uh, within our collective unconscious. According to Jung, again, these, these archetypes are a set of universal symbols, okay? And these symbols and themes, they reside in our unconscious of all human beings. Specifically, we're talking about men, right? I'll do 12 female at some point. And just like I said, I do the 12 female virtues. I'm going to get there. I got it written down, but this is what I'm doing for, for this, this uh, 12 weeks, right? Um, the hero, he embodies qualities of courage, strength, and resilience, engaging in a journey that involves overcoming significant challenges. So in this episode, we're going to talk about the hero archetype in depth. We're going to talk about its core characteristics. We're going to talk about its shadow. Every archetype has a shadow and how it overlaps with other archetypes. And then how can you optimize your archetype using your faith and your fitness? So that's the, the template that I'm using throughout all these episodes. Uh, hopefully it's not that redundant, but each of them has something specific you can take. So let's dive in, shall we? So the core characteristic of the hero Jungian archetypes provide this framework for understanding human behavior, motivations, and aspirations. The hero archetype is no exception. This, this, this archetype emphasizes attributes that drive a person toward achievements, overcoming adversity, and confronting inner and outer challenges. As an analysis of this archetype, we're going to use the five core traits that we've talked about before. Empathy, skills, independence, wisdom, and creativity. And how each of those kind of uh, reveals the nature of this, of this hero. Okay? So if we're assigning percentage scores, we're going to go empathy, 12%. Despite popular notions that the hero archetype is defined solely by physical strength and courage, empathy plays a notable, though smaller, role in this entire archetype. Empathy in the hero manifests in the form of compassion towards others, a deep-seated understanding of the suffering in the world, and a commitment to defending the vulnerable. Heroes and stories in, in real life often protect others, not merely for the sake of glory, but to a right uh, to, to right a perceived wrong and, or some kind of injustice, right? It's their empathetic connection that fuels the hero's drive to engage in heroic acts. We talked a little bit about that with the rebel. Uh, so that you may, there's a perceived injustice. We're going we're gonna to get into it. Last week, I used kind of Robin Hood. This week, think of any, any hero, Aragorn, right? But he's, I'm going to get to him. We're not, we're not there yet, but um, he is a hero type. He sees that something's going on in the world and we want to, uh, to deal with it, right? So, number two at 5%, skills. While the hero archetype does not center around technical or social skills as much as other archetypes might, 
It requires a basic level of competency in the hero's field of battle. For instance, physical strength, combat prowess, strategic thinking, and even charisma are essential to the hero's journey. However, these are seen as a means to an end. These are tools that serve the hero's greater purpose rather than uh, defining the characteristics of themselves. Next, the second largest at 33%, independence. Independence is a core trait of the hero, defining much of his narrative arc. Heroes often set out on their quests alone, whether physically or metaphorically, to prove their worth, strength, and courage. We're going to get to the hero's journey another time, so we'll, this is a good segue for later. I'll remind you guys to come back and watch this episode. This trait of independence is not merely self-reliance, but the hero's intrinsic need to seek their purpose without relying on others. Independence within his archetype is also, also closely linked to identity, as the journey often involves self-discovery. Now, how many hero movies do you watch where the hero is truly alone the entire story? Very rare, but they usually start out on this journey alone. Sometimes you start out as a band, think like Lord of the Rings, or a fellowship, as it were. But the hero usually starts his journey on their own. But along the way, they're going to meet somebody. You know, that magician, that sage, that wise person is going to help unlock something inside themselves. Or they're going to meet some other uh, kind of their, they might even meet their shadow at some point and they have to overcome that. Or they, there's a love interest or something. This uh, all plays into the story, that uh, into human existence, as it were. But at the end of the day, the hero is, is a very independent um, person, okay? The largest percentage at 39% is wisdom. The hero is more than just a warrior. He's also a seeker of knowledge. This search for wisdom is evident in the hero's journey. We're overcoming trials and facing hardships. It's going to lead to a deeper understanding of the world and themselves. Wisdom in the hero's context goes beyond mere intelligence. It involves discernment, moral fortitude, and the ability to make decisions under immense pressure. So to be a warrior, just like in uh in Braveheart, right? Uh, uh, William Wallace tells, and uh, the other guy's not, uh, has it Haggis? No, not, not Haggis. He tells his buddy with the red, the red hair with the rocks. He said, he, you know, he picked, the guy picks a big rock over his head. He misses. And William Wallace grabs a little one and digs it right in the head, right? He says, first, before you can use this, the rocks, he goes, you got to learn to use this. So be wise, be cunning. That's kind of the, the attribute of the, of this wisdom aspect of the warrior. And finally, at 2%, creativity. Creativity in the hero is, a, is minimal compared to other archetypes like the creator or the magician. Um, but heroes generally focus on execution rather than conceptual, conceptualization. While they may not create new things, they often adapt to changing situations creatively, showing tactical adaptability and spontaneous problem solving in crisis. So while they may not be, um, you know, they may not be the one creating the siege engine, they take the siege engine and put it uh, in, into work when they're taking down a castle or they take the catapult and put them over here for your artillery while you have your um, your bowmen ready to take out the infantry and then you've got your cavalry rolling through. He knows how to command the things that he's already got rather than necessarily creating something else or taking what he's already got and using it in a creative way. But again, creativity in this sense is actually kind of being able to create something, um, but being able to improvise and adapt and overcome is essential to being a, a hero, right? <clears throat> so now that we know what the hero is, we need to talk about the shadow. So for those of you just tuning in, the shadow, every archetype that we've talked about has a shadow. This is that unconscious or dark counterpart that emerges. If there's an imbalance in uh, the, the, the dominant force of, you know, the good side, if, if you will. Um, and it usually manifests in a negative way. For the hero, this can be arrogance, this can be recklessness, and this can be a compulsive need for validation. Instead of striving to protect or serve others, the shadow hero pursues personal glory at any cost. Gaston, right? You guys know what I'm talking about from Beauty and the Beast. He would be like the shadow. He's got some qualities of a hero, right? But he's generally arrogant. The three, again, aspects. Hubris, a belief in one's, in, a belief in one's in, invincibility can lead to risky decisions and an over... Oh, ah. Start over again, Chase. Here we go. Hubris. I should read my own notes sometimes. <clears throat> Hubris, a belief in one's in, in ah, a belief in one's invincibility. There we go. Can lead to risky decisions and an overestimation of one's ability. How many times have you read in in a history book of somebody's hubris being their downfall? Some people even say like the story of Atlantis was a great uh, just an allegory for hubris and how this great civilization fell because they, you know, tapped in and, and brought about their own destruction. Right. 
uh, Icarus, when we talk about flying too close to the sun, is, is, is a type of hubris. These are, are is, is the sh uh, one aspect of the shadow of the hero. The second one is isolation. This drive for independence, obviously we're very independent if you're going to be a hero, it may turn to complete alienation or loneliness as the hero becomes unwilling to accept help or acknowledge their own limitations. I can do this on my own. And either they end up failing the mission or they get killed ultimately because they decided that I can absolutely do this by myself. In the Marine Corps, they would keep you from isolating yourself because they wanted you to understand that, no, you're not going to get through this by yourself. You have to look to your right and to your left. So a lot of these kind of lone wolf kind of hero movies, think about like The Witcher, right? Um, yes, Geralt. Uh, Geralt of Rivia is a is a is a kind of anti hero, anti hero, whatever you want to have, however you play him as, right? But he's always got people along the way. But generally speaking, you're playing by yourself. But other like more successful heroes, now again, which is probably a bad example because that's just you know one guy in a video game, right? Books are great. I need to read them. I've heard nothing but good things about him. That's on the to do list. But anywho, you always find somebody else to help you along the way, whether it's Jennifer or Danny Lyon, whoever else in the Witcher stories. Or, you know, Frodo, Aragorn, the, whole, the Legolas, all the guys in Lord of the Rings. There's always somebody else to it. And when you're a hero, if you understand that I actually have help and the people that are around me, you break free of the isolation, break free of the shadow, and can actually step into to glory, as it were, uh, and, and save the day. <clears throat> the final uh, shadow aspect that kind of manifests is aggressiveness. When the hero archetype becomes imbalanced, empathy can diminish, and assertiveness or aggressiveness can transform into outright just brutality or barbarism uh, and ruthlessness. You don't want to let yourself get, you know, you never want to attack in a blind rage. Sometimes the, 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 you, you get into it, you can channel that. That's one thing. But if you lose all empathy and compassion, you're not a hero anymore because who are you actually working for but yourself? When you acknowledge and it, it, when you acknowledge the shadow and you integrate it into your, your psyche, you can understand, okay, this is what I need to look out for. It's going to help you reach your full potential as a hero uh, and maintain a healthy balance because you know what to look out for. And you know when these things start creeping in. It's not always just zero to 100. Sometimes it's just a subtle increase in either your hubris, your isolation, or your aggressiveness. Look at any of the ancient Greek heroes. They all, all were great as heroes until they got to be a ruler. And then they were all terrible rulers because their hubris got a hold of them. They weren't smart enough. They couldn't. All they were good at doing was doing hero things. But then once people elevated them to kings, thinking like Hercules, ultimately they fell because they had nothing else to fall back on because all they knew was these great feats and their hubris got all, got too much of them. Maybe people exploited them because they knew that weakness. Maybe not. Maybe. Right. So how does the hero overlap with other archetypes? The hero archetype shares a very significant overlap with the warrior archetype. Duh. <laughs> While both teams emphasize strength and courage, the distinction lies in their primary motivations. The warrior is driven by loyalty, discipline, and service to a greater cause or a leader, whereas the hero is driven by a personal journey of self-discovery and moral development. So you see the difference that the warrior kind of works for kind of a group or a greater cause or some, some leader at, uh, on, on behalf of that ruler, right? Whereas the hero doesn't necessarily want to be a ruler at the end of the day, He's still got this warrior kind of attribute, but it's really about, okay, I want to do this uh, for my own personal edification, my own personal growth. Um, and you can use, you, you can grow personally and still be a good person. It's not saying the hero is a bad person at all, or, or, or that the warrior is good and the hero is bad. The heroes can most definitely be good because you go through this whole process where you want to be the best that you can be, but sometimes you got to go through these things and discover your limits. And then you can be kind of a warrior hero or heroic warrior, this kind of thing. You see this all throughout literature. So, that's kind of how they uh, intertwined. An example of this is that a person embodying the warrior might fight for that honor, loyalty, or duty to a group or nation uh, in, in this collective framework, but that hero's actions have some personal code of ethics. Think like Batman, sort of a dark hero, right? But my one rule, that's, that's my Batman voice, my one rule. Um, <laughs> and his journey demands facing internal conflicts or fear. So Batman, I think, would be a great example of this hero archetype who sort of lives in the shadows, always battling himself, right? Where is she? Like, you guys know, that's my Batman voice. If you like Batman, let me know. If you like the Batman voice, tell me to keep moving on. All right. This isn't live, so I'm just going to keep going. 
Um, so despite both these differences, these differences, both of these archetypes uh, share traits like resilience, courage, and a readiness to face danger. So they they can truly be a force for good, but maybe their motives are just slightly off, right? Not not necessarily in a in a, in a negative direction, but they're just there's they, their motivation stems from greater good or personal discovery. So how do we optimize the hero archetype in uh, using our Christian faith? So the hero archetype. It really aligns closely with biblical themes, sacrifice, redemption, uh, spiritual growth, all these things. Figures like David, who faced Goliath, or Jesus, who undertook the ultimate sacrifice, they exemplify this, this hero's journey. So you incorporate them by, again, humility and servant leadership. This humility, this humility that is emphasized in our faith helps counter the hero's shadow, uh, that shadow of arrogance and pride. Jesus taught that the greatest among us are those who serve. So for the hero, this principle fosters a shift from personal glory to serving a higher purpose. So that kind of heroic warrior, we kind of move towards the warrior because we are ultimately serving others at the end of the day. Once we go through this uh, this journey, maybe you start out this kind of, I'm doing this for me. But then a lot of times, again, in the, in the, in the movies, look at that uh, Mad Madigan and um, Mad, Bar Mar Mad Mardigan in, uh, in Willow. He kind of is out for himself, but he ultimately finds that he can be a warrior and serve a higher higher purpose. Uh, by the end of the movie. Now, spoiler alert, the movie came out in the 80s, so no spoilers. <laughs> you should know by now. Go watch Willow. It's great. Um, another one is faith in God's guidance. Heroes often confront uncertainty, fear, and moral dilemmas. When you embrace Christian teachings, it's going to help you as a hero to navigate these challenges by emphasizing the importance of uh, you know, your faith and going to God for divine wisdom. When you trust in, in the plan that the Lord puts in front of you, um, it enables you as a hero to act courageously, even when the outcome might be a little bit uncertain. You're ready to listen, Lord, you said you got me. I'm going. Let's make this happen. And it can also, again, lead you out of the shadow by keeping your moral compass and your integrity focused on uh, that true north, right? A strong moral foundation, as we know, it just helps keep you grounded and keep you oriented on what is right. Biblical principles such as love, kindness, and honesty will help guide the hero's actions, allowing that hero to evolve, avoid falling into that trap uh, set by the shadow side of aggression, barbarism, lack of empathy, uh, and isolation. Okay, That's what we want to avoid, but we can keep ourselves grounded and oriented properly by using our, our faith. This is the Three Pillars Podcast. So what would the Three Pillars Podcast be without talking a little bit about fitness? It's essential in this hero's journey because it that fitness is going to teach you discipline, going to teach you resilience and mental clarity. You see a theme through all these things. You can use your fitness no matter what archetype that you are in. That regular exercise, maintaining physical health, it's not only going to support your needs for physical prowess as a hero, but also provides you truly a metaphor. It makes it a metaphorical representation of overcoming challenges by taking this heavy, this bar loaded with heavy circles and lifting it as many times as you can. That is a literally a metaphor for overcoming challenges. Now apply that to your the rest of your life. You can overcome because you've already set yourself up for success by being physically fit, having that physical prowess. Maybe how many times in, in a movie or in, a, in a, uh, a TV show or a book, just the hero, he's got an advantage because of his size or his physical, his physical uh, prowess as we, as we talk about. You know, maybe he's, he uses that to his advantage to avoid confrontation. Not that he, he doesn't want to fight. I just don't want to fight any old body. I don't want to come in here and just pick fights with people. But the bad guys see that I'm here to take, take care of the town. Maybe they turn tail and run because they know that at least they perceive that, man, that's a big dude. I don't want to mess with him. Then you have saved the village and, and just by being big, <laughs> right? It doesn't always work like that. Guys come back with, with, a, with a group. If you haven't established your little posse already, man, now you're going to have some trouble. Now you're going to get creative to ward off the bad guys. But that's at least a step in the right direction. So the hero obviously strives on strength and he thrives on strength and the capacity to endure adversity. But this regular exercise builds only not your physical strength, but mental resilience. Resilience, make it easier uh, for the hero to con confront the inevitable trials that you're going to face in life. Discipline, self-mastery in your fitness routine is going to help you, again, set and achieve goals. Remain committed to whatever your cause is, whether it's yourself or other people, and achieve mastery over yourself and those causes. It aligns with the independence trait because by reinforcing that self-reliance, 
and, and self-discipline, you can truly be a self-starter as a hero. Not necessarily self-serving. That's what we want to get to throw the Christianity in there. We want to serve others, not be self-serving. And again, if we talk about that body-mind connection, this physical activity helps promote mental clarity and emotional regulation. This helps you in your hero's journey by reducing stress and promoting mindfulness. Take care of your body. Make it as strong as possible. You only got to worry about the mind and the mental games that you might uh, deal with because your body can handle it. And if your body's taken away, now you still have a really sharp mind, but you have been able to uh, keep yourself as physically fit as possible. So again, faith, physical fitness, all is a mean to achieve a greater self-awareness uh, and your own inner strength, not just your outer strength. So that's why physical fitness is important into all of this. To conclude, and again, just like with every other episode, there are will be references at the end of this. I'll put it down in the show notes. Young, Campbell, Moore, Peterson, and uh, even C.S. Lewis, uh, Mere Christianity. I would read that and talk about the hero and talk about um, this kind of heroic archetype. He goes into it if you read that book uh, to any degree. And if you have not read that book, I highly recommend it. It's fantastic. Anything Lewis writes is great, but that's a, an especially a great book because he writes it too young warriors who he considers heroes who are getting ready to go uh, into World War II. So, to conclude, the hero archetype, it represents a timeless symbol of strength, resilience, and moral courage. While its core characteristics include empathy, independence, and wisdom, it also possesses a shadow side marked by arrogance and recklessness. By recognizing and addressing the shadow, individuals embody this archetype, can avoid its pitfalls, and achieve greater balance in life. We've talked about the notable overlap between the hero and the warrior specifically in the shared uh, emphasis on strength and courage. But their distinction, if we're talking about overlap, is just motivations. Hero, again, more individualistic. Warrior is is more uh, group-oriented towards a higher cause, right? Whereas, again, the hero is more about self-discovery. I'm on this quest. Heroes are always on quests, right, to seek something. A lot of times what they find at the end is they had it all along within them. And that's important for heroes. You have that stuff in you, but sometimes you have to get it, get challenged for it to awaken. Whether you're an athlete, uh, if you're in the in the military, or just everyday life, you'll never know what you're capable of until you're tested. Go back and listen to my my episode on the White Knight. I think it was a live episode I did several, probably a year or two ago. You know who is the White Knight? It's a man has never had his medal tested. I did that. Uh, not not. That long ago, I talked about it again recently, I think. I can't remember. Anyways, test yourself, push yourself, find your limit, and you'll know what you're actually made of. That's part of the hero journey. As a man, if you're going to optimize your life with the hero archetype, incorporate your faith and incorporate physical fitness because that's going to provide a powerful means uh, for you to grow. Okay, that's what what is to, for you to, to grow inward, and outward, you're going to grow by incorporating this. Principles like humility, faith in God, and moral integrity help counteract this shadow influence and guide the hero towards those selfless acts. At the same time, physical fitness cultivates that resilience and discipline necessary for the hero's journey. When you embrace these practices, you as a man can successfully navigate the challenges of the hero's journey, becoming not just a symbol of strength, but a force for good in the world. It's what you do that defines you, right? It's not not the man. In the mask, but what I do that defines me, right? If I'm going to go back to Batman, I probably butchered that quote. I haven't seen a Dark Knight in a long time or Batman Begins in a long time. But what you do that defines you as a hero, good to go. So <clears throat> that's all I got for you guys. I hope you've enjoyed this study so far. That was the hero. How many of you guys identify with the hero? Let me know down in the comments below. While you're down there, subscribe to the channel. Share this show. That's how it grows. Whether you're on Apple, Spotify, Amazon, whatever. Leave a review. Share it with whoever else is in your circle. Check out Good Pods. Good Pods is a podcast discovery platform. It helps little guys like me get discovered. It's kind of like Goodreads. It helps you to go in and create a little profile. See what I'm listening to. See what my friends are listening to. Maybe you'll find a podcast. You're like, man, that's really cool. And you've got a whole new uh, something to listen to if you're into podcasts like I am. I put them on at work. Just like to listen and learn. I'm, I'm, I'm getting I'm like 50 episodes into the history of Rome right now. It's awesome. It's free education. Turn it on. I hope that this journey we're on right now and this podcast, Three Pillars podcast, is educational for you guys, men, women alike. So let me know. Drop it in the comments. Share the show. I appreciate it. Check out Three Pillars podcast website, Three Pillars podcast, WordPress.com. Uh, drop a blog every Monday to get your week started. 
I drop a podcast every Friday to end your week and go into the weekend strong and be prepared for the next day. I try to keep you guys as focused as possible. Check me out on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, wherever you are on. You will probably find me except for TikTok. I'm just not doing it too much. It's too much. Um, all that being said, guys, thank you very much from the bottom of my heart for being here. I truly appreciate it. We're going to end with a quick word of prayer as always and then kick you guys out for a fantastic weekend. Good to go. Let us pray. Father God, thank you for giving us tools and resources, and most specifically your example on how to be a hero. Help us to use our own inner strength and develop our, our courage, our discipline, our resiliency. Help us to, to embody faith and humility in, in our service to others. Let us go on our own journey into heroism. Let us be uh, heroes in our own right in some way. But help us to do it for the right reasons, Lord, to combat that shadow, to help us to do it for the glory of of you in service to others. Lord, I ask that anybody tuning into this, you give them peace. Whatever they're going through, whatever struggles they're going through, let them know that you're there in a way that only they understand that it's you talking to them, Lord. Lord, I, I thank you very much for this opportunity, this platform to be able to get on Every we can talk to, to our friends and our, and our brethren. Help us to just grow your kingdom to the farthest corners of the earth. Lord, I ask all this in the holy name of Jesus. Amen. All right, guys. I'm Chase Tobin. This is the Three Pillars Podcast. Until next time, Tobinator.